Hey guys, Filthy Robot here. I wanted to react to the Age of Wonders 4 update. This is their first dev diary post launch, and I wanted to kind of take a look at what they're tracking on and uh, see how it lines up with what uh, I think needs to be fixed for this game. So let's get into it. All right, reflecting on the launch. Ooh, I guess I'm going to be doing some reading out loud. What a launch! For us at Age of Wonders 4, launch has been a dream, both a critical and commercial success. Paradox put out a press release that the game is the fastest selling in the series, selling 250,000 units day four uh, of release. We're very grateful to all the people making this possible. The launch has been a roller coaster in other ways too, of course. Some may have seen the user reviews directly after release. This was primarily caused by people not being able to launch the game after purchasing. This was unfortunate. We both and we started investigating, preparing a hotfix, which alleviated some of the issue. Luckily, the user review score quickly climbed up uh, in the hours after launch. Since then, we made a number of patches to improve stability and performance in other uh, various platforms. We also got help from one of the graphics card manufacturers who fixed their driver. We're happy to see the core premise of the game gaming a massive traction. The function, the faction creation and evolution plus all the new systems was widely embraced by fans, but also uh, appealed to a new audience. Of course, we have also seen feedback and criticisms of us from a sub for a subsection of the fan base that actually started as soon as we showed the route we were taking that preferred a more traditional approach to factions, especially in future updates. will keep on investing in faction content, allowing both for more distinction in gameplay and growing the number of possible fantasies. Um, I think this is one of their strongest systems. I'm gonna do a full review of this game, um, but uh, a short summary of that. Um, I think the system is really well done in this game and it's probably the most interesting system in the game. So um, I'm, I'm glad to see they're leaning into it. I think that's a huge selling point for the game. Modding is off to a promising start with the Steam Workshop already having 285 mods at the time of writing. We also see people acting in a, adding in new content, like creating additional tombs, uh, tomes rather, but also making interesting adjustments to game flow. It's very inspiring to the team. All in all, Age of Wonders 4 has been very healthy, had, had a very healthy start. And we're looking forward to expanding the game with your feedback. Of course, we're mapping out the DLCs for the coming year. But we also expect to do a lot in supporting patches and updates. Um, that is a very optimistic set of paragraphs. I am glad for their financial uh, and commercial success. I wish them only the best going forward with this game, but this game is in really rough shape to... Uh, to be quite this optimistic and this positive. Um, there isn't a single player game in this game and uh, the multiplayer is too imbalanced to play. So what does that mean? That means for me as a player who wants to engage with this game, I can't play anymore. I just can't, there's nothing else I can do. Everything is broken. So um, let's see what they have to say. We have an update in Dragon Dawn. The Dragon Dawn content pat Oh my god. The Dragon Dawn content pack and the massive free Wyvern update that accompanies it are nearing completion. I can uh, already say the data may be close, the date may be closer than you think. We're on target to make this the fastest DLC slash major patch before the uh, major patch release after the launch of an AOW game. I hold out hope for major patches. Um, but the fact that none of the issues that I'm worried about were addressed in this opening set of paragraphs leaves me a little concerned about what this is going to be. New stuff is fun for this, but new stuff... Um, is this going to be, it's going to be an extra layer of nothing over, not nothing. It's going to be an extra layer of options you could take if you could play the game, but you can't play the game. So let's see what they have to say. <clears throat> the company Free Wyvern Update already has over 10 pages of patch notes. Here are some provisional highlights I could share with you. We've added a create faction button, which takes you directly to the faction creation flow. This is nice. You can create a new faction from the ground up, edit, a, edit an existing faction to create a random ruler using the new random ruler feature. We've also added two new traits, one body and two new traits, one body, and social traits. Doesn't that not work for plurals? If it's two new traits, shouldn't it be one body and one social? If they're specifying one here and multiples here, isn't it more than two? I I don't know what the fuck they're talking about there. All right. The Empire development team has been rebalanced. The Empire development tree has been rebalanced. Early skills which require early skills will require more accumulated affinity and have an increased Imperium cost. Some skills have been removed or have been moved earlier and some are replaced with entirely new skills. Um, I think the Empire development tree needed a rebalance. I don't actually think the problem was early Imperium cost. I think early Imperium cost was fine. I think later Imperium cost is a problem. I think it's too high later and well, anyway. So this seems like not exactly the right direction. Not not what I would have done. Um, a bunch of stuff moved around and replaced with entirely new skills is good. There's a bunch of shit in that tree that's entirely useless and some of it comes on, uh, online really, really late. Uh, we also addressed several issues. Wild expansion reduced chance of summoning a greater animal from 60 to 20. Oh, it was 60. So someone was telling me it was 20, but it wasn't. Fixed a bug where it triggered on uh, annexing ancient wonders or swapping provinces between cities. Military engineering. Oh, I see. This is um, not what I thought it was. This isn't the summon spell. This is the province swapping uh, imperium. Oh, that makes sense. Military engineering now grants work camp instead of palisade walls. 
Oh, post cost reduction reduced from 50% to 25%. That's definitely a buff on a kind of situational one. That's kind of nice to get the work camp right off the bat. Knowledge extraction changed from $50 per hero to 150 per hero. I wonder if this is intentional. The problem with this language is that I'm not entirely clear what they've done here. If they've changed it from what it looks like it says here, 50 knowledge per hero, per hero level, excuse me, to just 150 flat per hero, that's a reasonable change. Heroes are giving way too much um, knowledge and farming AI heroes via city states or um, single player like entities is the easiest thing in the world because the enemy AI doesn't know how to fight the game at all. So these were just like, the enemy heroes were just these huge um, tech packs. They were just like, all you have to do is go engage with it. You get a bunch of experience, a bunch of new items and a shit ton of tech and it's super overpowered. So um, that needed a nerf. I'm a little worried that another way I could read this is that they just left out per hero level on the second part of this. And now they upped it, but they can't be right, right? There's no way they'd up this overpowered skill. I guess we'll see when it comes out. <laughs> All right, souls. When uh, while several of the tomes we visited in the update, necromancy tomes will be uh, will have a rebalanced soul economy. The following changes should result in a higher general soul income and the possibility to gain even more souls when investing in it. All necromancy tomes uh, change soul harvest income from one, two, three, four, five, and five per hero to two, th two, three, four, five, six, and six for each hero. I had a fight recently where the numbers that I, of souls I got only made sense if the hero was giving zero souls. So I don't know if this is what they, it says that this is what it was, but I don't think we were getting five per hero level. I wonder if there's also a bug they fixed here. All right, Thomas Souls, replace Soulbind Army, sustained world spell. Replace Soulbind Army. It's now a sustained world spell, soul collector, plus soul income and 30 gold upkeep. Okay. Um, so you don't have to debuff every army that you attack to get souls. Tome of Souls, Soul Fire changed from 10 souls to 10 mana. Um, not sure that's a good change. The whole upside of the nuke spells from this tome were that they didn't cost mana, so you could use a different resource. Tome of Necromancy reduced Necromancer's soul cost from 50 souls to 70 gold and 25 souls. Tome of Great Transformation changed the cost of Whiteborn Transformation from 200 souls to 300 mana and 100 souls. I mean, these are all fine. Um, they really need to show these costs on cards that you've completed and when you're teching for them, which they don't right now, the cost of Whiteborn transformation has to be looked at outside of the interface you're using to select that. I didn't even, I didn't even know it cost 200 souls. I just don't think I've ever gone for the Whiteborn transformation or haven't done it recently. But sure. Cab and mounted units. We've heard you loud and clear. You want more mounted units? We put several on top of several units on top of horses, wolves, boars, and the like. A mystic spellbreaker, houndmaster, and wild speaker and units are now permanently mounted. They just took two of the stronger earlier game units, Helm Masters and Wild Speakers, because these are summon units, and they just made them stronger. Don't know how I feel about that. I feel kind of not good about it, if I had to guess. Mystic Spellbreaker, I think, is the Tier 3 um, unit. I, I don't mind if Tier 3 units are mounted. Tier 3 units are, or Tier 3 um, faction units are extremely difficult to get to with the, the tier three upgrade needed, which is just insanely expensive. So I don't mind making those stronger. Um, I wouldn't have chosen this exact one. And doesn't this totally uh, interact negatively with uh, all the racials that give you certain units mounting? Like mostly the tier three units, I think. We'll see. Uh, well, units like Dark Pursuer, High Dawn Defender, and Glade Runner will get mounts when paired with an exotic mount trait. Uh, it would be nice if we knew which units did that through the exotic mount trait hover, but okay. These units will be more easily recognized thanks to the new optional cavalry tag in the unit panel encyclopedia. That is nice. Um, the high mobility of the cav units is super good in this game. Um, it's really noticeable on heroes in particular. Uh, there is one counter to cav, supposedly, which is pikemen. Pikemen do additional damage to mounted units. Maybe we'll see more use for them. They're kind of niche right now and pretty, pretty weak, honestly. So um, I think this is kind of a neutral. I, it's weird that this is the loud and clear shout out. This is feels like really minor stuff to me. All right, quality of life improvements. But what have we done to make the player experience smoother? You now have the ability to disassemble the com to disable the combat action camera, giving full control to the player. Okay. 
Show location button should now indicate way better where the corresponding event location resides. This is a very nice quality of life increase. This was so stupid. The events are unavoidable. You're not allowed to interact with the main the main map while the event is telling you to make a decision and you could never see where the hell these things were. So sometimes you just get quests that spawn in like basically inaccessible locations um, for you. Like they're in enemy territory or they're in an enemy's base or some garbage like this or a million miles away. It now has an animated sequence so the player can visually see where the location is relative to their current location. I really just feel like this is this is a half-ass fix though, right? Like this is nice to have quality of life, but really what we need to be able to do is we need to be able to minimize the um, the quest location and look around the map before having to interact with accepting or declining the quest. I need to be able to check things like what are my affinities, uh, what are the health of my armies in that area, where is this location, you know, what are my income levels of the various stats that might be relevant to this. It just the quests are given to you in a forced manner that is not particularly conducive to the rest of the turn-based manner where you're making interactions between other things to make decisions. There's a, like there's the, the problem too sometimes where I don't have enough of a resource so I lose one of the options of like one of the rewards or quests and I could have traded or sold or made that resource in other ways that turn if I'm given time to do that. And I just feel like on a turn-based game, these things shouldn't be instant. I shouldn't have to interact with them immediately. I should be able to interact with them when it's convenient for me on that turn. So seems kind of kind of dumb too this, this is a good start but it's like not enough of a fix for this status effects are now also displayed in the unit abilities panel here you can see the number of stacks and duration of status effect they also include tool tips you don't have to either enter the unit panel anymore to determine what the effect does that's really nice i hope they um standardize that there's a couple effects that don't uh, play nicely with their cards right now notably the um the toma souls buff and the the hp buff in the early game um that one needs to a better tooltip and also to be described whether or not the effect it's currently doing is a bug or not if you attack through an underground passage the reinforcement rule is now disabled so it's always one army versus one army battle i hadn't been tracking on this as a problem but that's interesting it's really weird okay so i guess you block a so I guess the problem was that you couldn't reinforce from top to bottom. So that enemy defenders losing, leaving three armies sitting around that stack, which is always three v one your army. I guess I don't know though. I'm guessing. Added an X and previous button for the hero panel. That's good. That's actually kind of annoying in the past where I've had to go back into my army panel to find my next hero. Buttons for cycling through cities are now in a fixed position. Nice. Okay. A lot of miscellaneous fixes. There's only like ten here. Fix an issue where vassals. Fix an issue where vassals that player. Fix issue where vassals that were, I think this is the wrong were here, it's supposed to be W-E-R-E, -E, that were players, that were player cities, Jesus, I can't even parse the sentence, fixed issues where vassals that previously were player, player cities would not send attack armies or spawn patrolling stacks. Okay. Yeah, this was a problem. Basically, once you vassalized a, um, a city-state, it just never did anything ever again. So if enemies pillaged it, they didn't really respond to that. So that's a good fix. Fix issue where the campaign-specific personality traits could get automatically assigned to rulers. Okay. Fix an issue where players would sometimes incorrectly receive alignment penalties for breaking treaties when war was declared on them. Instead, of, uh, instead the war-declaring player now receives the penalties. Okay. Fix an issue where the five-turn delay for declaring war on a free city could uh, would not be applied when vassalizing a city. Okay. Fix an issue where vassalizing a migrated city that at any point in time used to be a free city would revert the city back to the original race of the city. Good. Fix magic victory spells losing their effect when reloading the game. Man, I didn't know that was true. I wonder what effect they were losing. The mana upkeep or like the impact of having all the the build uh, the promise improvements that you built. Outpost building is now uh, correctly removed when the outpost is converted to a city. Good, this was super annoying to have to manually remove that every single time and uh, cost you upkeep until you did. Fix bug where spider webs were dealing double damage. Good, events are moddable. Cool, and much more. Uh, we understand that you want to get your hands on these fixes ASAP, but we kindly ask for a little more patience as we verify the fixes. Our plans to roll these out on all platforms simultaneously. The road ahead, we're just beginning. Uh, we're just at the beginning of Age of Wonders 4 and look forward to expanding and improving the game longer than we've done in any game in our history. That's nice to hear this stated. I hope they start taking community feedback then because there are a ton of problems with this game right now and they're all very fixable. Um, the core systems of this game are super cool and super interesting. It's just the stuff they have going on in the game right now makes the game basically unengageable. Like I, you can't play it for more than a little tiny bit because the AI is just too bad and there's nothing to do. And you can't play multiplayer because the game is so unbalanced and broken in so many different ways that you can't play multiplayer. So you can't play single player and you can't play multiplayer and it leaves everything. Feedback will be a major driving factor as we strive for even greater immersion, replayability and fun. It's kind of a fluff piece. Um, it's weird that these are the ones they, I mean, these are quality of life, quality of life's fine. It's weird these are the ones they highlighted here. These seem like kind of minor fixes to me. It doesn't seem to address any of the major issues with the game. 
Um, new content is always nice, but new content needs to be in the context of uh, correcting old content before you specialize too heavily in new content or do both simultaneously. You just we, we don't want new content at the cost of not fixing the existing problems. We're happy to have new content, but we want new content in um, in addition to previous fixes. So. Again, super excited that they're doing well. I hope they continue to patch the hell out of this game because this game has a lot of potential. And I think it has potential for multiplayer too, which is really exciting. Um, but there's so many change, so many problems. And I'll, I'll cover those more fully in my uh, review of this game, which should be coming out relatively soon uh, after recording this, you know, a week or two. Um, and uh, we'll go we'll go from there. So uh, cool, I'll keep tracking on these. Um, let me know if you like seeing the uh, me working through the updates of these games, tracking on games that I'm interested in uh, a little bit longer term. And uh, yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching.